Hello, 5 Minute Friday number 29, and we've finally got the optical dot punch finished. By far the hardest bit of this entire project has been creating this optical lens, and that's what we're going to focus on today. And we've used some interesting techniques to get a perfectly working optical dot punch. So let's get stuck into the machine side first. So this just shows you our starting conditions. We've got the, um, the acrylic bar butted right up against the chuck, and uh, we've touched on, zeroed it out, and we're using a non-ferrous um, insert to do this. We're going to spin it up a really, really, really high RPM with loads of coolant, and actually that gives a fantastic finish. So this just showing some cutting parameters. We're going for 2,500 um, RPM and a feed rate of just 0 0.005 per rev, um, and we've got flood coolant on. And here we are just walking through our, um, our program. And here you'll notice we're working really, really close to the chuck. So I'm just hovering over that emergency stop button the whole time. So this is our finished product. If you have a look at the, the surface finish in this, it's absolutely fantastic. I've got a lovely um, machine fit, which has been done on the conventional machine just to prep it up. Well, this profile here has been done on the CNC, and we're going to have a look at that shortly. But when we take it out, you'll see that the lens geometry we looked up in that first video, and this isn't really doing it justice, but you can tell it does have a, a magnifying property and it is absolutely crystal clear through there. We've got a little centering dot at the bottom of it. So it's a, it's a fantastic item that has uh, saved about 80, 90 pounds. So let's have a look at that CNC program. The tool paths are pretty simple, just um, machining off the front, we're gonna face, then profile, and we're actually leaving the entire back of the, um, of the stock there because we're trying to minimize deflection. And so we've machined that up on the conventional machine first. So after we finished the CNC, we went on to the finishing. So when the lens came out of the CNC lathe, it already had a brilliant finish on it because we use a really high speed and a slow feed rate and flood coolant. So it was pretty good to begin with, but still not that optical finish we're looking for. Now, unfortunately, I did lose a little bit of footage in the editing of this. And basically what you're missing is just um, some footage of us polishing the lens using various uh, degrees of grip paper and it was actually wet and dry this site easy composites fantastic supplier they um, they do all kinds of different resins and things we use in other projects and um, they supply some wet and dry abrasive paper and you get it in different grits and basically the idea is you go from a low grit and you work your way up gradually to the highest grit that you have available and the higher the number the finer the finish that you can get now they have a brilliant tip here, never move on to the next grit until all the scratches of the previous grit have been removed and only the scratches of the current grit remain. Whenever you change grit you also need to wash the part and the sanding pad. That just gets rid of any old residue of the, uh, the abrasive ceramic or whatever it is that they use. So then once you've done that you do the finest grit and you wet it through and it almost creates like a, a milky type polish and that gives a really good finish on it, which to be honest is probably good enough, but we went one step further and we use this stuff, Jewelers Rouge, which you can buy from Amazon. It's pretty inexpensive, but what that is, is iron three oxide or ferric oxide. You dip it on the lens cloth, so that's the kind of thing that you get with the glasses and you basically just put that final, final sheen on and that's how you achieve the crazy optical finish that we managed to get. So that brings to a close the final video in this optical punch series. It's by no means an essential piece of kit, but it definitely does make workshop layout jobs a lot easier. So in future videos, we've got some interesting techniques coming up. We're going to be looking at different ways of measuring a hole. And in the next video, we're going to look at a fantastic material called tricot. So until then, do like, subscribe and comment, and we'll see you in the next video.